Hi, everyone. Welcome to day two of uh, Synergy Traders number 30 uh, for, uh, for June 9th, 2021. This is the dedicated Forex day. Uh, so we have uh, five great presentations for you today, starting with uh, uh, Jeff Wecker of Global FX Trading Group. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Hi, how's everyone doing today? So uh, really glad to have you here. And uh, I'm going to be talking to you today about the state of the markets, uh, particularly uh, FX and USD. And we'll also touch on the S&P and we'll touch on gold and silver and we'll give you an update on Bitcoin as well. Uh, and for all these markets, we're going to talk about where they've been, where they are today and where they're going. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm a former member of the Chicago Board of Trade. Uh, I've been in the business 25 years now. And I started out in the, uh, in the pits of the 30-year bonds at the Board of Trade, actually in the 80s. And uh, it was just a great place to learn. Um, and you had to learn quickly or you wouldn't be around very long. And I was fortunate to learn all the things that have helped me in the online trade and arena. Learned how stops move, how to handle stops, how momentum changes, okay, how to, more important, how to control risk and keep yourself in the game. Because as you know, uh, I've been doing this 25 years, but I've seen just thousands of people come and go over this 40 year period. So I was very fortunate and I'm very excited to still be doing this after 25 years. And um, I've been trading, although I did start out in the bonds, uh, the bond pits uh, in the 80s, and that was quite a place, you know. I was in the pit there with two, 300 other, you know, really good traders, and um, you were writing your trades on little three by five cards, you were getting stabbed in the back with pencils, you were getting pushed down the flights of stairs, and um, you had hope when you made a trade with someone on the other side of the pit that they honored that the next day because uh, bonds could be limited up against you and someone denies the trade and you're out of the business. Uh, over my time there, I saw many people uh, get caught in out trades and similar situations, they had to write a check, sell their seat, and they were out of the business. So it was about as tough as you could get. I mean, today, it's mostly mental for us. Um, we sit in front of our PCs with our lattes and trade. But then uh, the physical part was uh, just as tough as the, the mental part. But anyway, I survived that. I took everything I learned and moved to online trading where I continued to trade bonds. I moved into S&Ps and gold and silver, lately Bitcoin and uh, but Forex is my specialty. Uh, I've been uh, doing that now for 10 or 15 years and I like it the most. I, I love the movement in the FX market. And, uh, you know, it's been very profitable for me over the past uh, 15 years. Um, with that, uh, let's talk a little bit. Let's start a little bit by talking about FX. The chart you see in front of you here, this is a 43-year chart of the U.S. dollar index. Uh, I'm a top-down trader and also a price action trader. Uh, so I look for, you know, what is the governing pattern of a particular asset? What is, what is the pattern or chart that has the, the most influence uh, on a particular uh, asset? And uh, how is it putting pressure on it? Well, you can see this in this 43-year chart. The USD, the dollar, made a high in 1980, okay? And ever since then, it's been in a 40-year decline, uh, a bear market. You can see from this descendant triangle uh, that it's in. And you can also see it's making lower highs here and lower lows, which is the definition of a bear market. So you'll also notice that these cycles in the, uh, in the USD tend to be about 10 years, in, uh, tend to last about 10 years. So the last move was started in 2010 here. It was a bull market for USD, rallied up to this uh, trend line. 
uh, in January of 2020, which is where I got short USD. So we've been short USD for about 15 months now. And I'm going to be showing you charts uh, of the individual currencies to see how we did it, how we made that happen. And um, this is no longer uh, an estimate or a projection or a forecast. It, when I was talking about it down here, it was a forecast. But since it, it hit the highs in January 2020, it's turned down substantially. And I'm going to show you the chart. So you'll see we're up about 2,000 to 2,500 pips in each of the major currencies. And uh, I'll be showing you uh, how we do that. And uh, I do it basically with my algorithm, which is called Trade Detector. Uh, all it is, uh, Trade Detector is an algorithm that mimics everything I learned in the first 10, 15 years of trading and puts it, those are the things I used to do manually. And all I did was uh, have it programmed into a, an algorithm so I didn't have to deal with uh, eight or 10 indicators and uh, the algorithm could run that for me. So this is the picture, this is the overall picture of USD, okay? And we have begun a 10 year decline starting in January um, of 2020. And uh, with that, let's start to take a look at some of the uh, individual currencies. Okay, um, this is uh, the screen you're looking at. This is my algorithm, my trade detector. And uh, it's, uh, it's very simple in usage, but it's very complex in what it does. Uh, while you're looking at this, okay, and trade detector is giving you buy signals with the large green squares and sell, sell signals with the large red squares, making it very simple for the trader. There's a tremendous amount of mathematics going on in the background. Trade detector is measuring volume. It's measuring momentum. It's measuring overbought, oversold. It's measuring divergences and it's measuring fractals among other things. So all this math is going on in the background and when all the indicators come together, trade detector gives you a buy signal uh, with the green square and sell signals with the red square, making it really simple for the trader. We have about, uh, right now, about 50 or so uh, people using Trade Detector around the world in about 10 or 15 different countries from, from uh, Europe to, to Singapore, to South Africa, to Australia, to the US. And uh, it's a great group of, of people and they meet every day on Telegram and they discuss all the trades uh, they're doing with Trade Detector, whether it be uh, currencies or gold, silver, Bitcoin, et cetera. They all work the same way and we'll be getting into that. So anyway, looking at order USD, it made a low in January, 2020, as I showed you on the big uh, USD chart. And that was at 55. Today it's at 77. And so we're up about 2,200 pips just in this pair. Now, the good news for you and for us is that this has got much longer to go. First of all, you just look at the chart, it's obvious to you that already USD is in a bull market, okay? You can't make any other decision by looking at this chart. The, um, but the big problem is, uh, it's not just enough to know that this is, you know, has a lot more to go, but you have to know when and where to get in and we'll show you how Trade Detector helps you with that. So how do we know where this is going? What's our target for order USD? Well, first of all, if you look at this pattern, this is a big head and shoulders bottom, okay? This is your left shoulder over here. This is your head here. This is your right shoulder here. This is the neckline, okay? And if you measure from the bottom of the head to the neckline, you, and extend it up the same amount, that's where you're going. So this measures to about 85 or 90 in order USD, we're at 77 now. So you're looking at oh, 800, 900,000, 1500 pips, depending on how far it goes. It will probably go higher than the target of 85. 
for two reasons. One, head and shoulders is a minimum measurement. So 85 will be the minimum measurement. And secondly, markets always overdo things. Uh, if you've been trading long enough, you know that. So uh, look for between 85 and 90 in um, 40 US state. I need a sip of coffee here. Okay. So as I said, it's not enough to know that what USD is going to 85 or 90, but where and when do you get in? You don't get in here on a red cell square. A lot of the public, they saw this big bull move. They got long up here. First thing that happened, 500 pip break. They all got stopped out. They lose money. But worst of all, they missed the next, they missed the move. They missed the next thousand pips up. So, um, you know, and, and that's the way the trading public has been for, forever. They tend to buy strength and they tend to sell weakness down here, which is exactly the opposite of the way you need to think. You need to think sell strength and you need to think buy weakness. You, could, you should write that down and put it on your PC because if you're going to survive over the long run, that's the way you have to think. And then use the something like trade detector to give you the exact points to do that. So this is the weekly chart to find our entry points where exactly we're going to get into this trade. We have to drop down the smaller chart. So we're going to drop down to the one hour here. And the one hour works the same way, okay, as the weekly or the month or whatever. And you still get buy signals with the big green squares. In this case, down at the bottom of our support channel, this yellow line. And we bought it here at 76.45 uh, on the uh, one hour chart. And we held it till the red square at 77.65, a nice 100 pip swing trade. And the nice part hey, is trade detector does not hey, do Yeah. Jeff, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we're we're still seeing the 43 year chart. Were you were you trying to show something else? Yeah, I'm on a, uh, I went from the 43 to the one hour to, to the weekly and then to the one hour. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, that's yeah. Well, strange. I'm still seeing the 43. Oh, Do you have it on a different, a different monitor or something? No, I stayed on the same computer. It says you're now sharing screen and it's showing me the, uh, I'm looking at the one hour chart. Let me go back to the, maybe I'll go back to the 43. And the 43. You, and. Um, oh, see. do you have it in a different window, maybe? No, I just have one, uh, one PC here and one window. Um, well, is, I mean, is it a different? Something here, button call a new share. What is that? That's. Uh, Uh, what is, what okay, is so now? yeah, now I see a green a chart with oh, green. Okay, okay, yeah. So, uh, so I may have to back oh, up a bit. Yeah, here so I think you were oh, sharing the specific um, the specific yeah. program instead of the whole monitor. So, so maybe I have to do a new share. Okay, do you see this uh, chart now? It's a, a weekly chart. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Green okay. lines. All right. So I'll go talk about that again since I went through it, but nobody saw the chart while I was talking. So anyway, um, we showed you the 43-year chart. Now we move down to the weekly chart uh, in, in each of the currencies. Uh, this is a chart of Australian dollar, US dollar. It's a weekly chart. It has this big head and shoulders bottom. Uh, we got a buy signal from trade detector down here at 55 in January of 2020. It's now at 77, so we've got 2,200 pips in that trade. This uh, big head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, this is your neckline here. The way you figure how far it's going, you measure from the bottom of the head to the neckline, extend it up the same amount, and that takes you to about 85, between 85 and 90. Um, it'll go certainly go at least that high. But the uh, head and shoulders measurements are minimums. And um, as you know, if you're a trader, the markets also overdo things. 
so I would expect it to go higher than 85. So we're at 77. So you're looking at uh, 800 to 1,000 more pips just in this trade. So uh, as I was saying, to know this, it's obviously a bull market in favor of uh, Australian dollar against USD, but where do you get in? That is always the problem. It's 85% of the trader's problem. If you get in at the right time and the right price, uh, you can do a lot of other things wrong and you're still gonna come out okay. But you cannot buy strength and you cannot sell weakness, okay? People who saw the strength in this move and bought it up here, immediately got crushed in a 500 pip break. Uh, they got sapped out, they lost money, and then worst of all, they missed the next thousand pips up uh, to our, our resistance area and a large red square. So, and then they probably bought it again and promptly saw another 400 pip break and got stopped out again. So it's not just enough, it's not enough to know just where the market's going and how far you need to know where and when you get in. So to do that, we have to look at smaller charts, okay? Um, and to do that, we're gonna look here at a one hour chart. Uh, by the way, David, do you see this one hour chart now? Chart change? Okay, I'm so, oh, uh, so. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. see. Yeah, we have a different chart now. This is the one hour. Yeah. And we use the one hour to tell us exactly where and when to get in. And as I said, trade detector, which is the algorithm you're looking at, gives you a green box down here, green square on a support channel line to get in. And so we got back in at 76.45, wrote it up to the red square at uh, 77.65, a nice 100 pip swing move. Now, Trade Detector will not let us sell weakness down here. You can see the power is how fast this down move was. And what's going on there when you see it move that fast is that stops are being hit. And what happens is the market keeps going until all the stops are hit. Then it runs out of momentum, runs out of gas, and you start to get divergences, okay, and changes in uh, momentum. Trade detector, uh, my algorithm, calculates that and sees that all the stops have been hit. There's no more momentum left, and that's where we get long, which is the perfect place uh, from what I you know, learned uh, trading in pits at the Board of Trade that uh, that's when I always got in after all the stops were hit, regardless of the direction, uh, because the uh, if you've been trading long enough, you know that no matter where the stops are, the market trades towards them. Okay, so I'm expecting them to trade toward the stops. I see them getting hit. I see that they're all gone when the momentum changes and I turn around and finally get into the market. And, um, you know, that's certainly the, uh, one of the biggest things that has allowed me to be in business for 25 years is understanding uh, how these, uh, Market, markets work. Now, I also use the um, algorithm for day trading. So for that, I'm going to go to a five-minute chart. Okay. David, did you see that, new, this new chart here, five minutes? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. You know. but, all right, this is, this is my day trading chart. It's... Uh, it's also, you know, part of the algorithm. I just switch time frames for my day trading, and uh, it works exactly the same way. It gives you the red, the green squares to buy and the red squares to sell. And um, I mean, look how beautiful this was. The sell signal came uh, at the top of the channel, okay, with the red square and at the channel resistance, and. Uh, all the people had bought, who had bought strength, had bought this rally, uh, got in just in time for the collapse. And this was brutal. All kind of, you can see the stops being hit as it plunges down. And uh, we took profits down here at the green box. And now we're going to be turning around 
and get it along. So I use these five minute charts to trade all day. I have six screens that I'm looking at. On each one is a five minute chart uh, or three, three or four or five minute charts, all different pairs. I watch about 10, 12 pairs, uh, just the five minutes and all day I'm buying the, uh, the green support selling the red resistance. And these moves can, these uh, daytime moves can be 30, 40, 50 pips. Let's see what this sale was. Uh, we sold it at 77.61 and we covered down here, 77.35. So this was about a 30 similar pip winner. And look how quick it was. These are five minute bars. So if you can take out 20, 30, 40 pips a day out of using the five minute chart on each pair, and like me, you're trading 10 to 12 pairs, uh, you know, that adds up to two, 300 pips a day, which is about, you know, what I do on average. And um, so trade detector, as you can see, is a great tool and it works from, you know, the uh, longer time frames all the way down to uh, five minute or even goes to one minute if you want. I don't trade the one minute, but, um, you know, it. it is available. So that's the order USD. You can write that down uh, if you have a uh, pencil and paper. The target is uh, somewhere between 85 and 90 long term. And this is a five to 10 year trade. So with that, let's look at, um, let's take a look at some uh, other pairs. Let's look at pound. This pound USD. Get it. Okay. David, can you see this new chart? Pound USD? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So, pound USD is very interesting and one of the uh, pairs I like to trade. Uh, it made its low down here in January 2020, if you remember from the big long-term USD chart at $1.14 roughly. It's now $1.41, so we have about 2,700 pips profit in pound USD. But, you know, and again, you can see this is definitely a bull market in favor of pound against USD. It's been going on 15, 16 months. But the good news for you and for me, it's got much further to go. If I, uh, if I do this measurement, uh, from the bottom of the head to the neckline, extend it up, it goes to a minimum of $1.55. So we're only $1.41 now. So we've got 1,500 to maybe 2,000 pips to make more in pound uh, USD. It's one of the more exciting pairs. And, uh, but again, it's all about where you get in, okay? At what price and at what time. Uh, I'm strictly a price action trader. I don't pay any attention to reports like non farm or anything else. Uh, I don't want that to confuse me. Uh, I get the signals from my algorithm trade detector. And uh, I'm kind of like Nike. It's a see it, do it. Okay. I see the green square, I buy it. I see the red square, I sell it. And I know all the mass that's being calculated in the background is correct because I've been doing it for so long, so I have great confidence uh, in the system. So um, trade detector is not gonna let me buy it up here, the red square, that's for the trading public to buy. And as soon as they're in, boom, four or 500 pip correction, we get long down here at the green square and catch the next uh, leg up. And we're gonna keep doing that for the next five to 10 years as USD heads lower and lower. Uh, these are the technical reasons for uh, the USD collapse that we're just getting underway here, but it kind of fits with the fundamental reasons, which I really don't pay attention to, but they are interesting. Uh, we see the US printing dollars they don't have um, for things like you know the, the stimulus and, and maybe infrastructure coming up and all kinds of other things. And uh, we also see a growing national debt. The 
national debt's about uh, 20 some odd trillion, about the same size as the uh, as GDP. But if you look at two big things, the unfunded Social Security and unfunded Medicare, uh, it's going to total about $140 trillion or seven times the size of the economy. To put this in perspective, imagine you had a business and uh, you were taking in 100 grand a year, but you owed out 700 grand. I mean, what would be the chance of you ever repaying that? And that's it's going to be the same problem going forward. Uh, how the U.S. would ever pay this back, and are, are people going to be willing to lend money to the government? Um, and even if they do, what kind of interest rate are they going to want for this kind of risk? So that's the uh, pound dollar, and you can write that down, your target for the next five to 10 years, $1.55. And uh, again, um, you will use uh, use trade detector or or its equivalent, okay, to tell you where to get in. Uh, this is the one hour chart. Uh, you see that, David? It's up there. Um, again, the one hour chart is going to give us our entry points, and here's one right here, uh, a big green square at the support channel line at a dollar forty. We report it to. Sold it up here at dollar forty-two. It's a nice two hundred pip swing trade. Um, then again, I'm also going to use this for the uh, five for my day trader. I love to day trade the pound. Um, here's the five minute chart for uh, pound USD, and uh, we of course sell it up here. At uh, what was that price? I can't see it. Oh, it's not showing me the price, but this was a beautiful move from the sale point down to where we covered this morning at a uh, dollar forty-one, and now we're turning around, and getting along for the next day trade up. So that's pound USD. Let's look at another favorite. Uh, let's look at uh, USD CAD. Um, okay, we'll look at the weekly chart, which will give us the big picture. Okay, all right. Are we okay here, David, on the chart? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Now, this is the weekly chart of USD, Canadian dollar, which has been one of the strongest uh, against USD. Like every other currency, it got uh, top USD topped out in January 2020. This was at about $1.46. Uh, right this minute, we're at twenty, so we've got about 2,600 pips in this trade. This is a head and shoulders top here, your left shoulder, this is your head, this is your right shoulder, your neckline was at $1.30. Uh, you know, trading 101 is we sold it up way up here because trade detector told us. But even if you miss that, uh, trading 101 with head and shoulders is to sell it below the neckline, which was at a dollar 30. And a lot of people got short a dollar 30. The nice part about selling the neckline is you know exactly where you're wrong. If you sell it goes below the neckline, you stay short unless it goes back above it, which it never did, as you can see. So even if you got short at dollar thirty, we're at dollar twenty now. You've got a thousand pips profit in it as well. If you do the measurement, USD CAD uh, from the top of the head to the neckline, extend it down. It takes you to about a dollar fifteen, or probably lower. Uh, we're at dollar twenty now, so you've got five hundred to maybe you know a thousand pips left in this one to do. So. Uh, this has been a powerhouse. Uh, the, uh, I think it's been the strongest of all the currencies against uh, USD. I mean, just have to look at this move to see what kind of decline the US dollar is in. Now, I think the last couple of days, we've had some very strong dollar rallies. You know, it made it kind of feel like uh, the dollar was going to be strong. But, uh, you know, to me, that's just a chance to sell more and get short. Uh, 
you know, when you get the signal from a trade detector or some other algorithm you may be working with that is accurate. So uh, I've been using the rallies the last few days in USD uh, to, to add to the shorts for this longer term move, which uh, we expect to go on you know, for the next five, 10 years, as I showed you in the uh, longer chart. So that's, um, it gives you a target for uh, order USD, for USD CAD, for pound USD. We can look at one more uh, before we move on to some different markets. Um, this is, uh, this is New Zealand dollar against, uh, against USD. Um, here's your, this is another head and shoulders bottom. Here's your, here it is. Here's your left shoulder. Here's your head. Here's your right shoulder. There's your neckline. It went through the neckline. As the said, uh, trading 101, when it goes through the neckline, you just say long. As long as it stays above the neckline, it, it never went back below it. Uh, this measurement, uh, New Zealand USD, if you do it from here to there, extend it, takes you to 89. You're only at 71 now, so you're looking at minimum 1,700 pips more uh, on this pair. So it's been kind of a laggard against the others, but if you look at it, there's no doubt it's in the bull market uh, against USD. And... Um, Again, you would use the one hour charts to tell you uh, where to get in and use the uh, five minute uh, for day trading. So uh, with that, I think I've given you a big, really big long-term picture for the uh, current, the major currencies against uh, USD. And uh, I hope you will find that useful. With that, let's start to look at a couple of other markets here. Uh, Let's look at Bitcoin, only because there's uh, always a lot of interest there. Um, you see this new chart, David, that come up? Yeah, it looks, looks good. Yeah. So Bitcoin is certainly a very interesting story. If you look at this, what you see is what I call a parabolic move up to 65,000. It was a tremendous move. Pete, some people call this a hockey stick. This is the long part of the stick, and it's the part down here the, that you hit it with. But whether you call it a, uh, a hockey stick or a parabolic move, uh, they all end the same way. I've been, as I said, I've been doing this 25 years. Every parabolic move I've seen has ended in tears, okay? It's been a disaster. And this is following suit. Um, it's kind of interesting. When it rallied up, we got a sell signal of 65,000 at the top of the channel. At the same time, Elon Musk came into the uh, market and said he was buying a billion and a half dollars worth of Bitcoin. Um, and people thought, you know, well, wow, he's in, he, he's in with a billion and a half, nothing to worry about. We're going, 100, going to 100,000. And of course, that was the end. Um, very similar to, you know, this is just another mania that uh, we've seen throughout history. Uh, I'm reminded of the tulip mania in Holland uh, hundreds of years ago where uh, they really got crazy over the value of a tulip. In fact, at the top of the market up here uh, with the tulips, the last guy to make a trade actually traded his house for a single black tulip. And that was probably the last trade that was made and uh, that ended in tears also for people uh, saying they're holding, to, holding tulips with, with no house. So anyway, uh, Bitcoin topped out at, at 65. We, today we're at 35. So we're down $30,000 off the top for those who bought up here. And um, I know a lot of this stuff was bought with borrowed money. So that makes it much, much worse. So where, the way I see it from here, the next support is down at about 23, 24, where this gap was on the way up. So I'm looking at 23, 24 as your next stop in Bitcoin from 35 where it is. And then we may get a rally off that and then it'll go much lower until uh, 
until it's over. So uh, that's the story. I, you know, it's a sad story, but uh, all markets that go up or down parabolic, parabolically, parabolically like this uh, do not and have not ended up well throughout history. So with that, let's move over to gold. Uh, so we have some um, gold traders here. Gold is a, a very interesting story. It had a, uh, had a really nice run up to 2000 area. And so after that, this is the daily chart here, corrected uh, straight down to about 1700 to our support line. We got a green buy box here at 1700. We got long, it, came, it rallied up a little, came back to 1700 to test that. I made a beautiful double bottom here which is classic and something you look for as a trader. And from this double bottom at 1700, we ran up to 1900, where we got a sell signal. We took our profits up there. Uh, so gold is in the, you know, uh, is now consolidated and, you know, might correct this most recent move, but we're gonna be looking to add to gold um, for the long term. I think it has, uh, there's some resistance at 1900, a little more resistance at 1950, uh, but I could see it going, uh, you know, somewhere uh, to oh, well over 2000 to, to the uh, 2500, 3000 area. This fits in with the inflationary story in the world that uh, has not been recognized yet, but it's certainly going on. Uh, we see really high prices, uh, prices going higher, in things like lumber and copper and housing. And we're hearing corporate executives telling us about the, their increased costs of uh, raw materials and, uh, and even labor as uh, we go forward. So I expect inflation to, um, you know, to, to keep rising and that's gonna be very supportive of gold. In the long term, it's not gonna be good for interest rates. Uh, we're probably gonna see higher rates due to the inflation, as well as the problems with the dollar, uh, you know, printing too many dollars, et cetera. Uh, so it's, we have several reasons for interest rates to rise, uh, you know, down the line. But that, that may not happen for a while. And uh, the stock market is telling us that there's nothing to worry about at the moment. Um, they, they push the worries down the road and, stock markets, uh, you know, looking pretty healthy. It looks like it may be uh, even going to make uh, new highs today. So uh, I'm not, not selling the s and I'm you know, obviously long in my portfolio uh, through my 401k and other, <coughs> uh, other assets. And uh, I'm gonna stay long the S&P until we see some sell signals from trade detector, uh, which we have not seen yeah. <clears throat> so uh, that's a summary of the markets as I see them uh, in the past, where they are today and where they're going. Um, we gave you a good review of FX and uh, the targets for each of those and uh, what we think about Bitcoin um, and gold at this point. So uh, I would like to thank you all for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the uh, presentation. And uh, I will look forward, I wanna wish you happy trading, good trading the rest of the week. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. With that, have a great day. Bye for now.